a nurse, you want to be familiar with heart blocks. And in this review, I'm going to be talking about second degree type 1 heart blocks. Now, you may also hear this rhythm referred to as a Mobitz type 1 or a Winky Box. So don't let all those names confuse you because we're still talking about second degree type 1. Now, the reason that this rhythm is occurring is because the electrical signal that's going from the atria to the ventricles is getting progressively slower until it doesn't really stimulate the ventricles to contract hence produce a QRS complex. So all of a sudden we will drop a QRS complex. Therefore, the key to help you really understand this heart block from all the other types of heart blocks is that that PR interval is going to gradually start lengthening. So whenever you look at that rhythm, you're gonna notice that the P wave is getting further and further away from the QRS complex. And then all of a sudden there's a P wave, but a missing QRS complex. And then the cycle is just gonna repeat itself again. Therefore, whenever we look at the characteristics and criteria for this to be a second degree type 1 heart block, you're going to see normal looking P waves. And the P waves tell us about the atrial rate and atrial rhythm. So the atrial rate will be normal, the rhythm will be regular, but the hallmark is that we're going to have gradually longer PR intervals until we don't have a QRS complex behind a P wave and this cycle will repeat itself again. So whenever you do see those QRS complexes, they will look normal and they will measure less than 0.12 seconds, but some of those will be gone. And because of that, the ventricular rhythm will be irregular and the ventricular rate will be slightly slower than the atrial rate. Now, what can cause this type of heart block? Well, a myocardial infarction can, especially an active MI that's affecting the inferior wall of the heart because it's causing acute ischemia that's depriving that heart tissue of that oxygen it needs to function. In addition, medications can do this like calcium channel blockers, beta blockers, digoxin, rheumatic fever, and increased vagal tone. Now, how is a second degree type one treated? Well, first of all, you want to assess your patient and see if they're having any symptoms. If they're not, you wanna to continue to monitor them and a cardiologist may be consulted just to further evaluate the patient. Sometimes they need medication stop that slow that AV conduction system, such as the calcium channel blockers, beta blockers, digoxin, and that will help them. But you also wanna evaluate your patient, make sure that they're not having a heart attack and MI. And if they are, they need treatment immediately. Now, let's say your patient is having symptoms. They're presenting with signs and symptoms that shows you that they're having low cardiac output, that it's falling. The heart's not able to pump blood and maintain itself. So the patient's having mental status changes. They have a really weak pulse. Their blood pressure is severely low. They're pale. They're dizzy. All that's telling you, hey, my patient is not perfusing fast. Something's wrong. So with this, you want to activate the emergency response system wherever you're at. And with this, sometimes what will be ordered is atropine or temporary pacing. Okay, so that wraps up this review on second degree type 1 heart blocks. And if you'd like to watch more videos on different types of heart blocks, you can access the link in the YouTube description below.